Dolby noise reduction, something loved and hated by analog tape enthusiasts for decades. With analog tape comes background noise and hiss. You can't escape it, and Dolby was supposed to minimize it. There are two groups of people when it comes to noise reduction, those who love it and those who hate it. And I've been known to say this, this is purely personal preference, but I tend to not use it because I feel that it degrades the quality of the music. And this. You know, those who are fans of the channel will know that I'm not a huge fan of noise reduction systems. Dolby B was the first one used with cassettes. Then came Dolby C, and toward the end of the cassette life cycle came Dolby S. Some people say that Dolby S makes the humble cassette stack up against the CD, and that's what I want to test today. Let's take a look at the different Dolby noise reduction modes and compare them to see if it lives up to the hype. Stay tuned. For those who aren't familiar with analog music recording, here's a brief explanation as to why we'd even need noise reduction to begin with. Now, in a tape recorder, the magnetic tape moves from one reel to the other over a set of heads. One for recording, one for playback, and another for erasing the tape. Now, some combine the record and playback heads into one, but that's beside the point. The act of moving that tape over the heads creates noise. That hiss that you hear when listening to a tape. Now this is true with cassettes, reel-to-reel, 8-track, -reel, any analog tape-based format. Now with reel-to-reel -reel recording, the tape is wider than a cassette, the tracks are wider than a cassette, and the tape moves much faster. This makes the noise less noticeable. The problem comes when you make the tape narrower along with the tracks and slow the tape speed way down. The slower the speed, the more noise you generally end up with. That's why Dolby noise reduction was something you saw more on cassettes than anything else. Now yes, there was Dolby A for reel-to-reel, -reel, along with DBX and other techniques for professional recording, but they weren't as widely used or widely needed as they were for cassette tapes. Now let's use my two-speed cassette deck for a quick example. Here's a sample of the tape noise from a Type 1 cassette at normal speed, 1 and 7 eighths inches per second, with no noise reduction. And here's a sample at three and three quarters inches per second. There's still noise, but the dynamics of it change and it's not quite as loud. Those were both captured at a normal listening level. So you can see why a lot of people felt that noise reduction was an absolute must. They didn't want their music overpowered by the tape hiss. Now here's some music recorded on this type one cassette. See if you can pick out the tape noise in the recording. That's where Dolby noise reduction comes in. Now we're going to switch to my Sony TCK615S for the rest of the tests. Now it allows for bias and level adjustment on the cassette to get it dialed in perfectly, as well as three Dolby modes that were used for cassettes, Dolby B, C, and S. We're also going to be using a good tape stock for these tests as well. Now for the first couple of tests, we're going to use this Maxell MS60 Type 2 cassette to give our testing the best results possible. Now it was a good tape back in the day and used the XL2 formulation. I used these tapes a lot in the late 80s and early 90s. So let's start with Dolby B. That's the original cassette noise reduction system.
If your cassette just says Dolby Noise Reduction, that's what it is. This is the mode that turned me off of noise reduction from the start. It was introduced in 1968 specifically for cassettes. It's a single band system and offers about 9 decibels of noise reduction. The benefit of this system is that tapes that are encoded with Dolby B still sound acceptable when played back on decks that don't have Dolby B capability. Now most pre-recorded cassettes with noise reduction used this standard. Let's have a listen to a Dolby B recording. Next came Dolby C in 1980. Now it wasn't as widely adopted as Dolby B, but it featured a dual band system that allowed up to around 15 decibels of noise reduction. Is it better? Well, you be the judge. One of the main problems with Dolby C was the fact that tapes encoded with this version didn't sound good when you played them back on equipment without it. Pre-recorded cassettes generally didn't use this version as a result. Take a listen. Now we move on to Dolby S. It was introduced in 1989, just as the CD was starting to replace cassettes in people's music libraries. 
It wasn't widely adopted, despite Dolby's hope that it would replace B as the dominant system in pre-recorded cassettes. Dolby claimed that the 24 decibels of high-end noise reduction and the 10 decibels of low-end noise reduction would make the difference between CDs and cassettes unnoticeable to members of the general public, and they had studies that proved it. They even claimed that it was backwards compatible with Dolby B playback equipment. I was recording a lot of cassettes during the late 1980s and early 1990s, and at the time, I didn't even know that Dolby S existed. It only came out on more high-end equipment, and that definitely wasn't something that I had back then. So let's focus on Dolby S and see if the hype was true. We're going to use the same tape, same music, so have a listen. Okay, pretty interesting. Now, it definitely seemed to make a difference in the noise level, and I don't feel it really muted the highs too much. Now, here's a side-by-side -side example of all three Dolby systems and a control sample played back on a blank tape. I think it's easier to see the difference when you hear them this way back to back. So what do you think? Does Dolby S live up to all the hype? Personally, I think it's very good. Very good. But will I start using it on my cassette recordings? Probably not. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that my personal preference is pretty basic when it comes to cassette recording. I don't want my analog recordings to sound as clean as digital. I actually like the faint tape noise in the background, and I don't want my recordings altered like that. But, like anything else, it's all personal preference. And that's what makes the analog recording hobby so diverse and fulfilling for so many people. We all have different ways of doing it, different preferences in the finished sound, different techniques, and that's what makes it a truly personal way of enjoying music. There are probably thousands of people who will disagree with me, and that's okay. Enjoy analog media the way you want to enjoy it. To me, However you choose to keep it alive is fine. Now that's about all I have for today, but before I go, it's time to draw the winners for the RTM tape giveaway from my 5,000 subscriber special. I know it's been about a month since the registration ended, and I apologize. It's taken me a while to recover from the flood here at the studio. Now, I plugged all the entries into a spreadsheet and then used a random number generator to select three numbers. Coming up on the screen now, are the names of the winners. Congratulations! Now we'll be reaching out to verify your shipping details so we can get your tapes out to you ASAP. 
Thanks again to RTM and Nashville Recording Supply for making this giveaway possible. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more giveaways like this in the future, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like so you don't miss out on what's to come. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy listening.